Um, welcome to SFU. Um, thank you for coming to our, our location. Um, this is just some hindsight or some information about Strategic Factory. We are your single point provider for all things printing, branding, marketing, you name it. We can put your logo on it. Um, so with that, we do have specialists. We, just like you, go to trade show and events everywhere. Um, so we want to share our insights into that, um, give you the experts in their fields um, with the supplies that you need. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy. So today we're gonna have um, Donna Heck, our Strategic Factory Client Service Director. Um, she leads our agency team and she is wild. I can't wait for her to talk. Um, and then also Bobby Cardoni, he is the Director comma Business Development because we don't use us anymore. Um, and he has been to so many trade shows, front of house, back of house, you name it. So he has some great insight. So I'm happy to have you begin. Yeah, real quick. Um, thank you, Ashley. Thank you all for coming. Let me just introduce our three vendors that you hopefully met before we started. Walter B., Larry um, from Mojo Photo, and Eric from Orbis. You guys want to just come on in, guys. Introduce yourselves. Um, in case anybody didn't get to chat with you, tell them what, what you have out there, and um, they can chat with you afterwards. OK, terrific. My name is Eric Campbell. I'm from Orbis. We're a partner with Strategic Factory. We handle most of the trade show and exhibit needs. Uh, outside, I brought a bunch of displays, a little bit of variety with me, from banner stands, backdrops, illuminated products, even retail kiosks. So when you're done looking at everything you know, here, we'll be uh, more than happy to show you. We can, you know, as they say, kick the tires on the product that I brought with me and go over some of the things that you may need. If you have any special needs, uh, we have not just portable modular, but we also have full custom capability and the ability to print seamless 16 feet wide on uh, dice elevation, which is a fabric product. We can go over that. If you're not familiar with any of the terms and terminology, please feel free to stop me at any time. And uh, like I said, we'll go out and we'll, we'll show you around. Okay. Good morning, Larry Sell with uh, Maryland Mojo Photo and Video Booths. Very long name, 13 years ago, I thought it was a great name. We were part of the Strategic Factory as well. Uh, we do all their you know, all their corporate events um, with photo and video booths. Uh, today we have outside there, which uh, with a backdrop there, which is a dice elevation backdrop that you can check out behind our photo booth there. We call it a, a traffic driver. It's an additional reason for people to stop by your booth at a trade show, give them a lot of fun, and also for you to collect their data. Um, we have a follow up with that later on, and also get your branding and awareness in front of them. It's going to last longer than the trade show ends. The trade show ends, your branding and awareness is still going to be in front of them. Uh, we have contest mode enabled on this particular uh, experience. We can have different types of prizes, different types of uh, odds for, the, for, the, for winning those prizes, which I, I can talk about when you come over and take a photo later on. But I'd love to chat with you uh, and hope you learn something today as well. So thank you. Cool. I'm uh, Walter B. So I go by Walter B because you can never pronounce my last name, right? So we've got, uh, we serve a strategic factory, uh, everything promotional wise. So anything you can put a logo on. So great for trade shows, which is today's topic, but also uh, recognition, incentives for employees, that sort of thing, company uniforms, and uh, just some great ideas in terms of generating booth traffic at your event to get people kind of the buzz. Where'd you get that? Oh, go over there. And, and that's where I got it. That's where you can bring people in and start engaging with it. All right. Good. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Door closed? Sure. All right. I don't want anyone hearing this. Cops here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I'm Bobby Cardoni. I have way too many years in events experience um, both on both sides. I've produced events, you know, from small holistic health fairs to 50,000 person music festivals. Um, I've been on the production side of things. so. I know a lot about what goes on in planning an event, and then as working on the other side of the table, I booth at a lot of events, um, whether it's for Strategic Factory, some of the um, organizations I volunteer for, so I know all about tabling too. So I am here to share my knowledge with you on that, and how you can get the most out of being at an event or a trade show. And my name is Donna Hecke, again, I'm Client Services Director here in the agency uh, with Strategic Factory. Uh, I myself have uh, 20 plus years experience in the marketing field and specifically with event marketing I have assisted uh, clients market uh, for events from a wide range from a pest control company all the way up to the International State Association. Awesome. 
So before we start, has anyone already signed up or planning to attend an event this year or a trade show? Yeah? Which, 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 anyone in particular? Or? Uh, Maryland Hunt and Garden Show. Yeah. Which is March 2nd. So right around the corner. Right around the corner. Anyone else? Yeah. 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 Housing fairs. Housing fairs. All right. Yeah. Uh, the Mid Atlantic Life Safety Conference. Okay. Great. Great. So yeah, the, they're all here in Maryland. Local, multi-day events. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And so I'm gonna hand things over to Donna. So we're gonna just talk to you about how you can set up to um, have a successful trade show or event. Right. Um, so first thing, of course, you want to get ready. Right. You want to understand what your goals are in terms of this event. Um, why are you attending? Um, you want to. Think, are, am I wanting to generate leads? Uh, do I want to expand my network? Do I want to launch a new product? Am I going to be uh, offering a new service, right? But the key thing about understanding your goals is to realize that you're not just going to be attending an event, right? You're going to this trade show, you need to look at it as an offline um, addition to your whole marketing plan, your whole digital strategy. And uh, when you have that kind of plan in place, you're, you're sure to succeed. So researching the event. This is pretty, should be standard, going to the right event. Um, Roberta, you said you're going to the Maryland Life Savings event. Maryland Mid-Atlantic Life Savings. Maryland Mid-Atlantic Life Savings event. Um, I would imagine that's not a bridal show since you are with the Fire, Fire Marshals Association. Mm -hmm. So you're going there because you know that your target audience is going to be there, right? You guys are going to the Home and Garden Show. You are HVAC, yep. so you know that people are going there to look for home improvements. Thing. Again, you wouldn't go to the life saving show, right? So knowing that the event fits they your goals, they, they can come. <laughs> yes, she, she must be on the uh, the um, sponsorship committee. So um, check out other exhibitors. You know, if you, if you see an event that seems like it's interesting, look at last year's sponsors. See if you know anybody who's been to it. Call them. Hey, was this a good show? Did it benefit you? Um, look to see if your competitors went there. Maybe, you know, if your competitors are there, you should be there too, probably. And then also just knowing the schedule. Um, knowing, are there happy hours, you know, sponsored by other, you know, companies that are going to be there. That's a great way to get in front of people. Are there happy hours sponsored by the event? It's another great way to get in front of people. Not everybody's going to walk through the event, but they'll go to that happy hour for to pack cash in their drink ticket and to get some free past appetizers. Um, so yeah, just knowing the schedule ahead of time and being prepared. We'll, we'll touch on that later too. But just taking advantage of every possible moment of exposure you can get at a show. Um, and then also research your competition. Is your competition going to be at the home show? Why would, why would someone looking for you know, central air in their house use your company over your competition. So just have be ready to impress the audience with you know why you are better than your competition. Yeah. And as Bobby was talking about being prepared, I think one of you guys back there said your next event is March eighth. Second. Second. Yes. Yeah. So weeks. you want to think about the day of your event, right? The second you sign up, you want to start building your timeline. You want to be prepared for the event. Even I would say, be prepared the day before the event or the week before, right? And what we would what, what we would recommend is give yourself like a six to eight week window of preparation time. And the reason for this is because you want to start promotion day one, right? As soon as soon as you sign up that paper to sign up for the event and pay that money, start promoting it. You're going to be there, okay? And then from there, you are going to start thinking about your collateral material. You're going to want to get that all designed and, and to print. You're going to want to start planning all of these awesome promo pieces, right? There's obviously going to be a certain amount of time to get those developed and created. And um, so you want to plan for that. And then um, you've already identified your goals, so you're, you're good to go. But yeah, give yourself that six to eight week window. <coughs> Promoting your attendance. Let people know you are going to be there. Um, be sure you're taking, taking advantage of every deliverable that is offered to you with whatever package you've signed up for if you're going to be a sponsor. Read every bullet point and make sure. 
If your logo's going on their website, make sure they have your logo. Make sure you give them your logo. I can't tell you how many times you show up and our logo is on something and it's not our logo because they just Googled something and right clicked and saved as and they go, that's our old logo. Like, where'd you get that? I don't know, I Googled it. So shame on me for not sending our logo, but make sure they have your logo. If your package comes with some social posts, write your social posts. Don't let them write it for you. You know, direct the narrative. Um, um, if, if it comes with an ad and a program, make sure your ad speaks to why you are there. Um, you know, if you are industry agnostic, speak to that industry that's reading the ad. If it, you know, if you're offering a special, maybe it says come to our booth and get this. Um, we're giving away this. Just make sure that you take advantage of every deliverable that you get with your sponsorship package or your, you know, just your, your table set. Um, you're, you're leaving money on the table by doing that. Absolutely. And another thing, I mean, that's a great place to start, right? Leveraging the social media from, <clears throat> from the sponsorship and taking advantage of all those hashtags and capitalizing on that. But then on top of that, you want to be sure that you're building a strong social media campaign for yourself, right? Um, you know, start promoting day one like what, what I mentioned earlier. Um, so you want to leverage the platforms. Are you a B2B or are you a B2C? B2B, you're obviously going to have more play with LinkedIn, right? Um, if you're targeting consumers, you're going to be on Facebook and Insta. That's more, more your area. Um, in, in addition to that, um, you're going to start seeing posts with all those great hashtags. If you see something getting a lot of play, boost that. Boost that post, right? Or turn it into to a full ad, run an, an ad campaign. Um, along those lines, you also want to think about where you're going to be. Maybe do some geofencing, right? All of the leads that you want are going to be in a targeted area. And with geofencing, you can now sort of micro-target your, your audience to that block or even specifically to that building, right? So say you go to sunny Florida, you want to target where, where your leads are. Um, a direct mail piece. You want to create a piece that will encourage people to go to your booth, like create a QR code, um, maybe encourage them to bring that piece back to sign up for, for a giveaway, um, for a great item. Um, also, you want to send out press releases to local media, like hit up radio or um, other, other outlets. Also, featured on event calendars. Um, and that way you can target the list which Bobby will talk about. <laughs> right. Get a copy of the attendance list. It's key. And if they don't offer it to you off the bat, ask for it. Maybe they'll give it to you. Um, this can serve you really well in a couple ways. A, maybe they're going to give you everyone who's attending's email address. That's gold. There you can hit everyone who is attending the show before the show, letting them know you are there, why they should come see you, and where you'll be. Come see us at booth seven. You know, we are a um, Maryland's premier HVAC company um, for, for residential, you know, homes. We're gonna be at booth, you know, 37, and by, while you're there, register to win, you know, a new car. Whatever you're gonna give away. But, <laughs> you, yeah. um, maybe they don't give you the, maybe, maybe you haven't gotten the opt-in, so you, you're not able to, you know, access this full list of emails, but you can still peruse the list of emails of, who, of people who are going to be there, and you can find, you know, you can say, oh, you know, Roberta um, from the Fire Marshals Association is going to be at this event. I'm going to go to LinkedIn. I'm going to, you know, connect with her. I'm going to send her a message, say, hey, we're both going to be at this event. Would love to meet up with you, set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with her. Maybe you can take her to dinner. Like, Roberta, you're getting everything today. I told you, sit in the front row. It's going to be very, very good for you. Um, but yeah, you can just see who's going to be there. She gives you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now you know who is going to be there, and you can um, access them ahead of time, and or or be on the lookout for them. So you can know that oh, you know what, that that's um, senior living community that I have been targeting. They're going to be there. I'm going to find that group of people, and I'm going to try to you know get them over to our booth and get a meeting set up. Um, and then one thing on the other side of that is don't fall for a scam. I get emails every day. Would you like to buy the attendance list for the Ocean City Hotel and Restaurant Association trade show? No, I don't. Why? Because A, 
I don't need to buy it from a third party that is gonna have bad data because A, it's bad data, and B, the, the trade show already gave me the email list. I don't need to buy it. So anyone trying to sell you an attendance list is just spam. So if it's not coming from the event organizer, delete. Please stop emailing me. I, I can tell now, um, so it's interesting. So they introduced me as Bobby. My real name is Robert, right? Wild, I know. But anytime I get an email addressed to Robert here, I know that it's just some spam email because they found me online as Robert, but everyone that knows me through Strategic Factory knows that I'm Bobby here. So it's like immediately, like you do not know me if you're calling me Robert. So just a you know, little. That's how I know my spam. <laughs> so preparing for the event. Um, design and, and, and um, make sure your booth is visually appealing and tells your brand story. You heard from Eric out there, there's tons of great, you know, awesome light boxes and retractable banners and pop-ups and, and step and repeats that you can put in your booth. Um, make sure that, that it's visually appealing so when someone is walking by, they can identify who your company is and what they do and what you do. So they, they know that they need to come see you. Um, you know, if, if your branding doesn't tell what you do, they may just assume that they don't need you, so they're just gonna keep walking. But if, if, if they can easily identify what your company does and how you can fill a need they have, they're more um, likely to stop by your booth and talk to you. Um, Walter is out there with promotional items. Have promotional items that are targeted towards the attendee of the event. You're going to a national facilities manager's trade show. Maybe you're going to bring tape measures. Or if you're going to an HR conference, maybe you're going to bring you know, notepads or wine. I don't know, whatever HR people like. Um, but just have fun, engaging things that people are going to like. Don't have you know, koozies. Everybody's going to have a koozie. And who needs a koozie at a trade show? Nobody. That koozie is going to end up in that person's you know, employee lounge when they come back with their bag full of stuff. Um, so, so yeah, have something useful. I mean, how, I mean, I've never bought a chip clip in my life. You know why? Because I get a chip clip at every conference I go to. And, and, and the chip clip I have right now, it says NFT, and they are a, huge, um, a benefits broker that we went, that I got at a um, human resources conference last year. I've never bought an ice scraper in my life. The ice scraper in my car says Cricket Wireless. <laughs> I don't know, I don't have a Cricket Wireless phone, but I know who Cricket Wireless is because they gave me an ice scraper. So useful things, things that someone's gonna want, something that someone's gonna use. Spatula, I don't know, you know everybody uses a spatula, right? Um, then going back to your setup, speak to your audience. Again, if, if you're able to, have a pop-up that talks to who the audience is and how they can use your services. Again, you're industry agnostic and you're going to a senior living event, talk about how a senior living facility, how um, a property manager can use your services. Room identifiers, direct mail, um, these are just things that we do, that we talk about. Um, so yeah, just knowing who your audience is and, and speaking to them from your booth, getting them to your booth. Um, another huge thing, can you select your booth space? Ask. If they don't offer, ask if you can see the layout. There's no, all they can do is say, the worst they can do is say no. That they're going to set it up. But you want to make sure you're away from your competitors. But you also want to be in a high traffic area where people are going to be seen. You know, you don't want to be stuck in the corner that no one's going to go to. You don't want to be um, next to the bathroom. You know, think of it like a, a nice restaurant table. You want to be near the entrance. Well, if you, maybe you don't want to be near the entrance at a restaurant, but. Um, you want to be near an exit where there's going to be um, flow, people flowing through. Maybe you want to be next to the bar. You want to be next to the water station where people are going to be, they're going to come to your booth. You're not stuck in a corner, sitting alone, not talking to anyone. And also, it's really important, know what the conference or trade show is supplying. Are they giving you a table? Is there a tablecloth? Um, even if they are giving you a tablecloth, Bring your own tablecloth. You know, make your booth stand out. Don't have just a black tablecloth. Um, I would recommend bringing a loose-fitting three-sided tablecloth. 
Um, don't do the, the fitted one because you never know what that table's corners are going to look like and it may rip your tablecloth. Happened to me. Um, so the loose fitting and then, you know, maybe they tell you you have a six foot table and you show up and it's an eight foot table and you have a six foot tablecloth, have a backup table runner. Super inexpensive. Keep it in your, in your trade show kit. Table runner just runs across the center of the table. You're still branding your table. You're still standing out from everyone else who's unbranded. Um, flooring, if you're going to a, a show at, especially like a union facility that has a concrete floor, they're going to leave that floor concrete and they are going to carpet everything but your booth. But guess what has to be carpeted? Your booth. Someone's been to the Gulch Board Convention <laughs> So, you know, have some, um, you know, have, have a carpet on hand, know what they're supplying, and, um, and just be ready to go. No surprises. And so part of that, no surprises, is you want to pre-game with your team, right? When you get to the event, um, you want to be prepared. So practice together beforehand. Make sure you guys are all speaking the same language in terms of your core message. Um, you all, um, everybody on your staff is well informed about your new service that you're launching or a new product that you're going to be uh, launching. Um, and you want to be ready for questions and um, stay informed about industry trends. And the reason for that is because when people come to your booth, you want to be the expert, right? You want to be their trusted source. They know to go to you because you know all of the information. You're well informed. You're educated about what you're talking about. Um, and it's going to uh, carry you through um, as a trusted advisor. Okay. All right, big day is here. It's time for the event. Arrive early. I, I can speak to this from both of my experiences, even as a event producer and an event attendee. As an event producer, if I tell you that the loading time is from 8 to 10 a.m., please don't show up at 9.50 a.m. Please. As an event attendee, don't show up at 9.50 a.m. because then you only have 10 minutes until the doors open. The doors open, people are going to be walking by. You're still trying to get your, your banner set up, your table set up, your tablecloth on. You're, you're wheeling things in through the attendees. Be ready. As an attendee, be there early. Be prepared for any surprises. Oh no, I forgot something. Hopefully you're local and you can call somebody and have them bring it to you. You can run to the store and get it. Um, just, just be on time and just don't be panicked because you're rushed. Um, you know, I would much rather be set up two hours at a time and just sit and maybe open up my laptop and check some emails or walk around, see who else is there, than five minutes before doors open, still be fiddling with something and trying to get it set up and then realize it doesn't work. Um, I think one of my favorite stories to tell on that is um, I one of the nonprofits I volunteer for, we went to an event, and on the vendor call, they told us, that load-in started at 8, and there was no assigned booth spaces. It was first come, first serve in a parking lot. Yes. To which I said, oh no, that's not going to work. So I got there at 7.55, picked the best space, and, and just set up a chair. I brought lunch, I sat, and then I watched the chaos ensue. And I was not part of the chaos. <laughs> and then my OCD event planner brain stepped in and I had to get up and, and make the event like flow because people were just like, all right, we'll just put our tent wherever we want. And I was like, no, we're going to have like a little walkway, be nice. we're not just going to have random tents everywhere. But when I heard that there was no event, that there was no booth spaces assigned, I knew that that was going to be a nightmare. I, I just knew it. So I was like, let me get there early. I'll bring a camping chair and a sandwich, and I just sat there, and I was content, and I wasn't messing with everything, and I got a good parking spot, too. Always keep. <laughs> Parked very close to my tent. Um, arrive early, be nice. Be nice. As an event um, producer, you know, we are under enough stress. We don't want someone yelling at me because something's wrong. Just be nice, be patient, yeah, and you'll get better service back. Yeah, that's all, that's all we asked for. And we'll get it. We promise. We promise. Unless it's a really bad event, like that one. That. No. Um, just, just yeah. Just be nice. Um, be interactive. You know, once you've got your table set up, 
don't be, you know, even if they've given you two chairs while the, while the trade show floor is open, don't be sitting at your table with your laptop out or your phone up. Don't be eating at your booth, getting food everywhere. Everyone needs to take a lunch break. Go sit off to the corner somewhere. Go sit outside. You need to take a phone call, take it away from your booth. Don't let people be intimidated because you're doing something else and you're not interested in speaking to them. Um, be invited, have them come over. You know, hey, how are you? you know, nice to meet you, can we talk to you real quick? You know, don't be pushy, don't be you know, barking at them in the aisle way, but you know, just, hey, come on over, see what we have. Would you like to win this? Have a great giveaway. Target your giveaway to who the attendee of the event is. You're going to an event that skews you know, heavily female, maybe you get a handbag. Maybe you get, um, I don't know, what else do we have to mind? If it's a male thing, power tool. The last night I was told that that was wrong because there's lots of women who apparently want power tools. <laughs> but know your audience. Know it's something that they'll need, something they'll like. And then you, if, if you do get something designer, like a handbag, you don't have to break the bank and go to the you know, coach store in, in uh, Bethesda. Go to Queenstown, go to Arundel Mills, go to the outlet. Buy last year's coach handbag. The person there, they don't care. They're walking away with a free handbag, possibly. So that's you know just an easy way to save some money. Um, so have a nice giveaway. That giveaway also helps you capture data, helps you capture that person's contact information. You've, they've got to put your, how do, what do I have to put down? Your name, your phone number, and your email. Boom, you've now got their contact information. You can follow up with that person. Um, have something that they have to come back to your booth for. Give them something the first time that they have to come back a second time. Um, if you, you know, if you are a digital company, you could do an SEO audit. And if it's a two-day conference, at the end of the day one, everyone who signed up for the digital for the SEO audit of their website, they've got to come back day two to see you again to get that audit result. So if there's something you can do in between days, do it and make them come back to get the results. Um, another fun idea is, is, is like a scavenger hunt. Um, we call it event bingo. We have a little bingo card and there's little bingo squares and there's things on the thing. Uh, there's things on this, the bingo card that you would see at a conference. You've met someone at, um, that you're LinkedIn friend connected with but you've never met in real life. Um, the presenter had some technical difficulties. Just a fun bingo game that they can play while they're at their conference, and if they get a bingo, they bring the completed bingo card back to you, and you give them a cheap, you know, some sort of prize, a $5 gift card to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. Something like that. Make them come back. Um, have a game, prize wheels, claw machines, scratch-offs, all fun ideas. A photo booth, like Larry did. And, and, then, and then Larry's photo booth, again, like he said, they are emailing themselves that photo and then you can capture that email address and you have them. And then hopefully they're gonna post the photo and they're gonna tag you on social media and they're gonna use the hashtags. So it's just more engagement with the our audience. Um, I would also just like to just say, dress comfortably, okay? If you're gonna be on a conference floor for 10 hours one day, stilettos may not be the best idea. Dress shoes may not be, you know, hard sole dress shoes might not be the best idea. You know, wear something comfortable, be comfortable, um, dress for your audience. You know, you're going to, um, you know, the, the plumber's union show, you know, maybe you don't want to wear a three-piece suit because you're just going to intimidate these guys. Dress to your audience, be comfortable. And also, take notes on your conversation. Hopefully you're going to have a lot of conversations with, with lots of different people and it's, it's gonna be impossible to remember everything you talked about with everyone. If I speak with Megan at the Home and Garden Show, and I talk to Megan and we both find out that we're both from New Jersey, you know, maybe I'll make a little note on that next to her name, Megan, from New Jersey. We also talked about XYZ, and then keep that specific data in mind as to what you talked about with that attendee. So then when you do your follow-up, you can talk about that. Like, hey, great seeing you. Hope you made it back to New Jersey, okay? You know, hope you liked your pork roll sandwich you had on Saturday. Or Taylor Ann, depending on where she's from. Um, 
And then you can talk about what you talked about in particular. Um, a lot of the events now, they're, they're using apps, WOVA or um, other apps where you can scan QR codes to get data. But there's also a notes section. Just, just type down what you wrote. Or put it on the back of the business card. Or have a notebook next to you. You know, talk to Roberta about that. You can pick one. Um, I talked to Roberta about um, fire jackets, you know, for the fire marshals or hats for the fire marshal. So you could say, I would love to show you the hats. Would love to talk to you about, you know, getting your HVAC um, ducts clean. Um, sorry, I didn't learn what anyone else did besides Roberta. Home shows. Yeah. Oh, they do HVAC. So. Um, and one thing that I want to mention too yeah. about what you're talking about the day of the event. Another thing to capitalize in or capitalize on is do some live feeds at your booth, right? Share all the fun that's going on there. You want to, um, if you're presenting, you also want to make sure you save that uh, presentation so that you can use that down the road as well. So piggybacking on what I just said, follow up. What's the point of going if you're not going to follow up? Um, what we have found works best is sort of a three-pronged approach at following up with people. So you're going to do direct follow-ups with everyone you talked to. Everyone that you talked to that you had a pointed conversation with, that you have some notes on, send them a direct email. Talk about in your email, in your follow-up, what you discussed at the event, how you can help them, why your service or product is what they need, how it will help them. Indirect follow-ups. Say you did a giveaway and you have someone that you didn't talk to, but they just came to get your, your swag piece and enter for your handbag. Um, you have their contact information. They stopped by your booth. They might be somewhat familiar with you. They probably took your you know, piece of promotional material. So send them an email. Hey, it was great meeting you. Pretend like you remember them. You know, hey, it was great meeting you. And you can do this through your CRM too. You know, it could just be an email blast. It was great meeting you. Would love to talk more. Here's my, you know, link to my calendar. Let's get on my schedule. Let's talk. And then a no contact follow up. This one really only applies if you've gotten the event attendance list. That way you can filter out everyone you talk to, everyone who stopped by your booth. So now you have the people who were at the event or registered for the event that you did not have any contact with. Send them an email too. You have their contact information. Reach out to them. Yes? What about like uh, <laughs> no call lists and stuff with no contact follow up? So if you have this, so okay, good good point. A, if you're doing a giveaway, you know, put, you know, register, have a little sign, register to win this handbag, fine print, by entering to win, you are agreeing to receive these, you know, emails from Strategic Factory or um, you know, whatever, wherever it is you work. Um, on this, assuming that you are getting the contact list from the event organizer, when this person has signed up to be at the event, they have opted in to receive marketing emails from the, the event um, exhibitors. So, if they're giving you that email list, and again, those you know people trying to sell you an email list, they're just selling you bad data. So those, those are the ones that I don't want to hear from you. The people that are, that, are, that are on this are people that were at the event that have opted in to receive marketing emails. And that's why they may not give you the email list. They may go, our attendees don't want to be bombarded with emails. So you have to talk to them. It's up to you. Um, you can use, there's free software out there, um, Apollo.io, where you, know, you can use that to find Roberta's email. Sorry, Roberta. <laughs> but you can find Roberta's email. Um, again, you cannot add her to your mega, you know, email list because you don't have permission to put her in that to receive automated emails. But you can send her a direct email. Hey, sorry I missed you at the conference, but I'd really love to talk to you. So you had an amazing experience, and now the event is over. But after the event. It's not over. You have so much that you can still do. So from there, you want to review your social media. You want to you want to um, see how you performed with the ads that you created. 
Um, and also we talked about doing geofencing ads. That can last up to 30 days. So say your conference is in down in Ocean City where it's all nice and warm and people are hanging out longer than the event, your target audience is still gonna be there. And also as we talked about with geofencing, your key um, contacts, the, the leads that you want are in that, in that area, right? Your, your marketing dollars are going to that one, that one space. Um, and you want to study the analytics. So if you send out Eventbrite, or you, you boosted um, ads, or you did um, some uh, some social media ads, look at the analytics and see where you perform. Um, as I talked about, if you're a speaker, take that information and continue to post that after the event. And then also as follow up, you want to look at everything you've done and everything that we've talked about, see what was successful, see on what could be improved, and then plan for your next event. I just want to touch on two other things that I that, that I want to mention is um, when you're at the event, be branded. I see you guys, you guys have your 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 sweatshirts on, your hats on, and I know your vehicles. So I'm assuming there is a van out there or a pickup truck that has the Maryland HVAC Maryland flag on it. Mm. Bring your branded vehicle if you have one. <clears throat> Park it prominently. Get there early. Get a good parking spot. Park up front so people know you're there. It's just more branding, more brand awareness. You're walking around. You have your brand on. People are seeing your brand. It's just more and more touch points. You can't have enough, enough touch points. Another great touch point, people are coming to give, get swag. You know, the Michael Scotts of the conference that just want everything. Let them have everything, eh? Just let them have it and keep them moving. If, if, you know, if they're not worth your time talking to, don't waste your time talking to them. Don't get into a conversation about the Ravens game when you should be talking to the next person who wants to talk about your business. Um, keep them moving. A great idea for, for those people and for everybody is a, is a handbag, a tote bag, with your brand on it. They are now a walking billboard, just like you're wearing a hat. Someone who doesn't work for you is doing your marketing for you. And they're putting their, their, their all the things that they get from other, from other vendors, they're putting it in your bag, your bag is on their shoulder, people are going, oh, you know, that person had a bag. I need to go get a bag, because my other bag's full. Because yes, you will see the people with seven bags full of stuff. Probably not who you want to talk to, probably not the decision maker, but just let them have your stuff. Keep them moving. Get that next decision maker into your booth at your table to have that good conversation with. And that's all we have. So we're gonna open it up to you guys. Does anyone have any questions? Yes? Are the slides available? We can make them available, yes. And, and if you want to talk to us afterwards, I have to be here until 5 o'clock today. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> to this. So I have, I'm more than happy to talk you know, about anything you want to talk about. Yes? Can you explain geofencing? Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, actually, I'm kind of lucky because one of my specialists um, on the digital team is here in the room. Um, Steve, would you like to talk a little bit more about geofencing? <laughs> Sure, I would. Um, yeah, I mean, you can you can definitely like geofencing. You, it's not like Google Ads. Basically, you can. Um, I know she said upload list basically, so you can take basically the list from the conferences. Yeah, the attendance list that Bobby talked about. You can upload those lists and actually have display ads. So. Basically, you see display ads on like CNN.com and you know Dictionary.com, etc. So what we can do here at Strategic Factory is we can actually upload those lists from the conferences, and we can basically run display ads and you know whether it's you know your company or you know, uh, whatever <coughs> company it is, and you can say like, hey, you know, you know, we, you, you know, join, you know, we saw you at the conference, or you know. Buy now, or you know, let's set an appointment, something like that. So it's kind of like a retargeting type of net, uh, method, almost. So if you already have contact with that person, they're like, "Hey, I remember that company. We met them at the trade show." Um, so it's it's a way of retargeting, almost. So that's a way of geofencing. And then also, it's 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 dropping a pin yes. on the conference location, and then you're going to serve those ads on their their, their mobile device on their laptop um, to them while they're at the event. 
Yeah, yeah, we can we can also do that as well. Uh, for example, if there's a there's something at like the uh, Baltimore, I know it's the, the CG Arena. It's not the Baltimore Arena anymore. We can actually just target people at that arena. So geo targeting is more like zip codes and everything like that. You can actually target just people at that arena. You can basically at that arena inside that arena and say, hey, visit our booth or you know, visit our website. So just people at that arena only and not zip codes or anything like that like Google Ads would do. Which, right, and so you know that your advertising dollars and your marketing dollars are well spent because everybody that you want to reach is right there in that, in that target area. And I was just going to add that, um, you know, with everything, the technology and the digital kind of enhancing our livelihood and making it a lot easier for us to function on an everyday basis, as the same goes. Do you believe from a marketing standpoint when you're planning for an event that digital ideas are more better that are better than, you know, having stuff on paper with your memorabilia on it or whatever that might be, so, such as like, you know, most people have a QR code for their business card. Mm -hmm. I still do hand copies of business cards because somebody's gonna keep that. They could lose the information on their phone or something like that, you know. So what is your perspective sort of on that as maybe companies try to change their marketing era? move towards more towards digital if you have an opinion of that my opinion is i am not a fan of digital business cards of the blanks of the scan me and add me to your contacts um i don't have a work phone i don't want a work phone i don't want to carry two phones some people like carrying two three phones so if, if your contact just goes into my contacts it's going to get lost in an abyss um if if it's a, if it's a physical card, yeah. They make us have one, so yeah. <laughs> I <know> um, <laughs> so if I can take some tangible product um, back with me, I prefer that. Okay. If I do get a blink, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like maybe screenshot that and email it to myself. My email every morning is just a bunch of emails from myself the night before things to remember <laughs> to do today. Um, okay. So I, I do things like that, yeah. uh, or I'll just write, you know, like I said, have a notebook and write down who you talked to and what you talked about, yeah. and then you have their contact. Um, if the event, you know, has invested in technology for you, use it. You know, a lot of times, like what will happen is they'll put a QR code on the person's name badge, mm -hmm. and um, and then you can you can pull their data into the app. Then you can export that as a Excel file and email it to yourself. So, and then that's where all your notes will live too. So you can say, that, again, I spoke to Roberta. She really wanted some fireman hats, and so that's when you're, you know, when you follow up with her. Hey, Roberta, great talking to you. Here's some examples from some fireman hats that we can help you with, or CPR dolls, or whatever it is that you would need from me that I can provide to you. And there's that pointed follow up that you know really triggers down, like it's the, no ambiguity. You're you're finding out what they need. But yeah, I, I am not a fan of the, the blinked cards because it just goes into my contacts that has 7,000 in it and then I've got to find it and remember it, yeah, sounds good. Um, so I have a question. Okay, I mean, if there's no other questions, um, again, we'll be here if you want to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Go get your photo taken at the photo booth. Um, Check out the pens and everything else that Walter B has. He's got some great pens. They're great pens. <laughs>